Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quartic equation with complex numbers. We have z plus i to the fourth power equals negative z squared or the opposite of z squared. Obviously we could write this equation as follows z plus i to the fourth power plus z squared equals zero. And then this would be kind of like a sum of two squares. I don't know if, that, if that's going to help. But we're going to be looking at the quartic first, obviously. So if you expand everything, you're going to get z to the fourth plus four times z cubed times i plus six by using the coefficients from the binomial theorem. And then four z times i to the third. And finally, you're going to finish with i to the fourth and then add another z squared. And the whole thing is equal to zero. Now let's go ahead and simplify the powers of i here. For example, this is z to the fourth. And as you know, uh, i squared is negative one, i to the fourth is just one, and i cubed is the same as negative i. Okay? So you can kind of put uh, these together. This is going to be negative 6z squared plus z squared is going to give us negative 5z squared. But I'm probably going to write uh, this first. Let's go ahead and take care of that first. So I have 4iz cubed. That's the only z cubed I have. And then minus 5z squared. So I've taken care of these and these. And now we have the 1 at the end. And then we have the uh, coefficient of i or z as negative 4i. And finally, plus 1 equals 0. So that's a really, really interesting quartic. You can use the quartic formula, but you kind of have to get rid of the z cube first. You can use, uh, I think, Ferrari's method, right, which is something that we've been using lately, or there are other methods as well. Anyways, this is going to be a pretty uh, complicated uh, case, so that's why I'm not going to worry about it, but you can definitely try to solve it because the solutions actually are not that complicated, uh, so hopefully we can compare what you find with what I find. But let's think differently because it's going to be a lot easier. So we have, first of all, the fourth power of something equals negative something squared. Remember, I said at the beginning, this, is this, this looks like sum of two, two squares. But I'd like to have a difference of two squares because it's factorable. Or I can get something like a squared equals b squared, right? A and B don't have to be real numbers, by the way, because we're not dealing with real numbers, right? So, how can I do that? Well, first of all, Z plus I to the fourth is Z plus I squared, and then that is squared one more time. So, it's good. And for negative Z squared, uh, if you remember, I squared is negative one. So, we can kind of write this as I squared Z squared, and that can be written as I Z quantity squared. Make sense? So this kind of gives us something squared equals something else squared, which is nice. So from here, we can take the square roots. Remember, there's going to be two solutions. First one, z plus i squared equals iz. And if you remember, we've done this before, but let's do it one more time. z squared plus 2iz plus i squared, which is negative 1, equals iz bring it over, you're going to get z squared plus iz minus 1 equals 0. Obviously, we can solve this using the quadratic formula. z equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is i squared, minus 4ac, which is plus 4 because we have double negatives, and that is divided by 2 because a is 1. i squared is real, right? It's negative 1. Something that you should never forget. So negative 1 plus 4 is 3. This basically gives us a positive determinant or, wait, it's not determinant. What's that called again? Discriminant. Yes, that's the word. So we kind of get negative i plus minus root 3 over 2. Obviously, I'm not saying z is real. I'm just saying that the discriminant is greater than 0. Okay? Well, when the discriminant is re greater than 0, don't we have two real solutions? Well, sometimes, when the coefficients are real, of course. So now, that's the answer, but we can kind of write it like square root of uh, plus minus square root of 3 minus i over 2, because the real part is what changes the sign. 
And obviously you can write this separately as well, but let's leave it at that and solve the other case. The other case is z plus i squared. By the way, uh, this is kind of interesting because first of all, let me tell you something. This was the problem that I made a while ago. If I can find the link, I'll share with you. So this problem was partially solved before, but why did I come up with this? Because I thought about, can we make this problem with more cases? And yes, there's a way to do it. Take one of the cases and then build another one. But what's interesting is that the solutions are kind of different. You'll see at the end what I mean. But the second case basically is when this equals negative iz. So you got to remember there are two numbers whose square equals i squared z squared. And those are iz and negative iz. If you go ahead and do the same thing here, z squared plus 2iz plus i squared equals negative iz. And then bring it to the left, you're going to get something similar but with a different coefficient, of course. And if you try to solve this using the quadratic formula one more time, you're going to get negative b, which is negative 3i, plus minus the square root of 3i squared, which is 9i squared, minus 4ac, again, which is plus 4 divided by 2. Do we get a positive discriminant again? No, because 9i squared is negative 9. So we get negative 3i plus minus the square root of negative 5, which can be written as plus minus square root of 5i. And guess what? This gives us an imaginary solution, not just complex, but also an imaginary solution. So you can write it in different ways. Negative 3 plus minus root 5 will be the coefficient of i divided by 2. And that's going to be the answer. So we got four solutions because remember, this is a quartic equation and it's supposed to have four solutions, right? Okay, great. Now, so we solved it. Again, we did basically break it down into two cases, and then we solved each one. You already know the first one, but we did it again, and then these are the solutions we got. So they're kind of different forms, right? One of them is like a A plus BI form. The other one is kind of like a, just a BI, which is imaginary, okay? Now let's go ahead and uh, go back to our quartic equation and uh, look at a couple different things and then we'll just finish up with that, okay? But these are all the solutions to our quartic equation. Take note. Okay, so now our quartic basically turns into something like this. Like I said earlier, this is the difference of... No, I don't want to delete anything. This is the, uh, the difference of, I mean, the sum of two squares that I was talking about, right? I guess I deleted the color. So, and then we can write this in different forms. This was the quartic that I basically ended up with, right? And again, if you try to solve this quartic, you should get the exact same solutions. But guess what? It's going to be super painful. And these are the complex solutions one more time. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.